So the story here is that CM Punk is essentially happening. I know for a fact that Warner has been told that he's coming back. So he's in the, like, they, they are very much aware of the situation. He, re he had recently said he was willing to return to AEW and he wants to make it work. So the, the, the issue here is that he's willing to work with the elite members. I know that as of, as of the time I was told, and as of early this week, they, there was no intention on the other side. Maybe Kenny a little bit more than the Bucks, but I know, I mean, there is no, they do not want to work with him. There's been no dialogue between the two sides either uh, regarding, you know, sitting down and making this work. So the plans have been put in place to possibly have a tentative Saturday show to be the soft brand split. When I used that term yesterday on Matt Men, I was told that it's less soft than I'm, than I'm putting out there. So... I, I guess there will be people that are predominantly on the other show, on the Saturday show. Also, Dave reported that there was a meeting scheduled between CM Punk, Tony Khan, Chris Jericho, FTR, and somebody, and other people. I, I've heard this from multiple people. And my, the way it was alluded to me is that the program will probably be Punk and Jericho in some capacity. I don't know if FTR is involved or Jericho Society is involved. But that seems to be, and you know what? That's a very smart way to do this. Jericho has presented himself as a locker room leader. You know, Jericho came out and said he's, a, he's toxic or whatever he said. And he's willing to make this work because he realizes that there's money in this. At the end of the day, it's for the greater good of the company to put your personal feeling aside with this guy. If he's willing to make it work with you, you know what? You can make it work with him too. So maybe this is a, a just-to-get-the-ball-rolling type thing. Especially with Kenny and the Bucks. Because that big money match, the big, big, big money match is a trios match between CM Punk and FTR and the Elite, and that singles match between Kenny and CM Punk. You got some big shows coming up, guys. You're trying to sell out a stadium. A three, it's a three-year-old company attempting to sell out a stadium. I believe right now, Matt, maybe you could find it, but I think the pre-sale like request, right? Not tickets sold, but the request was around 50,000 uh, like standbys or, or inquiries, right? Are we referring to All In? The Yeah, to All In. Mm, uh, um, I'll see if I can look that up for you. If you can find um, that, I, I think I believe okay. I believe I saw that there were like fifty thousand. First, I saw twenty five thousand on the list, and then somebody yesterday sent me a link saying that there were fifty five thousand uh, potential people, you know, in queue to be in the pre sale. You know, wow. if that's true, if that that is true, uh, you know, that speaks to some extent the interest level on the show. I my guess was, you know, initially they could sell twenty five thousand tickets that first day, easy. But now, you know, maybe you move that bar a little bit. Also, Dax on his podcast confirmed that CM Punk misses wrestling and wants to come back. Of course, he wants to come back. He got the itch. Once you got it, you got it. And you know what? He didn't leave on his own terms. He tore his tricep. He, he had the incident at the scrum. He got into a fight. It's not, you know, you kind of want to rehab your image. At the end of the day, listen, people think that he doesn't care. Of course he cares about his how his image stands in the world of professional wrestling. This is, this is a guy that's taken tremendous pride in his work. He was, he was always told he, he doesn't have that WWE look to become a big star. He proved everybody wrong. He became a huge star with, with everything against him in the company. And I, listen, I'm not, I have no, like, I have no opinion on whether or not he should come or not personally. I, I don't have, I wasn't there and I'm not, I'm not going to fill in the blanks here based on what happened. But as a business person, as a marketer, I work with people that I despise sometimes. I just don't get along with them personally. Nothing like, I'm not, I'm not talking about like, criminals or you know someone that's <laughs> breaking the law i think people that i just don't get a maybe i think you're a little bit of a jerk and i don't i don't necessarily like you but if it's good for business and there's money to be made of course i'm going to work with you because my job comes first professionalism which was totally out the window at that scrum I, i'm hoping everybody learned their lesson here 
and they realize how big of a moment this is for them. Because here's the other part, okay? Ten, I'm, I'm, and I'm throwing this out there. I'm not saying that AEW is going away in 10 years, right? But let's say that were to happen. And AEW has gone for whatever reason. They get canceled. Tony can't do this anymore. Something happened. Who knows? They get bought. That story of the beginning of the end will always be CM Punk. That is the moment that they're going to look back in all those documentaries. And they're going to point the camera and they're going to say, this was the moment. This scrum was the beginning of the end for this company. There is nobody that wants that. On their shoulders. Nobody wants to carry that burden. And CM Punk definitely doesn't want to carry that burden. Because this is now, you know, his legacy is tarnished. Tony's legacy is tarnished. Chris, all of these guys. If you can make it work, you're going to have to make it work. So what? this is how I see this playing out, right? I see playing out is that you're going to do a trios match with FTR and CM Punk and Jericho and, and his crew. You'll do that. It'll lead to a singles match with Jericho. You're going to spread this among uh, across the summer. You could do some interesting stuff. Punk could have some really fascinating matches on, you know, the Saturday show or Dynamite. You could rehab his image to the core that doesn't like him. If he comes off humble and apologetic and he kind of maybe says something and maybe, listen, man, all the, if this guy comes out and, and looks at the camera and says, listen, Tony didn't want me to do this, but I want to apologize for what happened. I talk about professionalism. I was not professional at that moment. And I've learned my mistake. And I hope that we could, you know, if he does it, he, he's baby facing himself to the moon. The, I mean, at the end of the day, you know, we talk about this. It, it, it's, it's such a crazy thing that happened. Uh, now they're going to have to work backwards and make this work for multiple reasons. You got double or nothing. kind of reset, up. right? It's a yeah, reset. They re yeah. yeah. I think this is going to be somewhat have... of a reset. Remember, you have um, the uh, the elite are going to be in this uh, feud with Blackpool Combat Book Club for probably most of the summer, I'm guessing, or going into double or nothing and maybe beyond. So yeah. that they're going to be occupied there. So you can leave them out of this and let uh, Punk rehab himself and then and then. Yeah. Starting next fall, maybe do that program. Uh, I hope so, because that's a big money match. That's a huge money match. Huge. I, I, I you know. You don't get these opportunities too often. You don't get to do Bret Hart, Shawn Michaels after after Montreal. You know, it, it's not something that happens. And I, I I just use that as a comparison of of opportunities that were totally missed. You know, due to circumstances, not anybody. Sometimes it's not your fault. You know, there were a lot of things factors that came in here. But if it was a perfect world, and a lot of stuff that didn't happen, Bret would have come back in two thousand two, two thousand three. And had his match and his return match with, with Shawn Michaels, it would have been a big mega match. Obviously, it couldn't happen. But you don't get an opportunity like this too often. And Tony knows that. And I think Punk knows that and everybody involved knows that. At the back of their minds, the Bucks and Kenny have to know what a big mega match this is. 